Today's Word Podcast with Rick Pena. Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pena, and I bring you today's word for November 3rd, 2017. It's a Friday morning. I love closing out the week strong and heading into the weekend strong. So uh, I've been teaching a series entitled As Jesus Is. This is part 70. As Jesus is part 70, 70. So obviously there's a lot to say about this, and I could go on and on and on. I've really been praying about how we're going to close this thing out. And so uh, we've been looking at 1 John 4, verses 16 and 17, and Colossians 1, 24 to 27 for a while. So we've been looking at 1 John 4, 16 and 17 for the whole series, and I've been adding different passages to it. So I'm done with Colossians 1, and I'm ready to move on to another passage. But before I do, I wanted to share one last message with you this morning about bringing the amazing back. You're going to see what I'm talking about here in a minute. So let's go to our two passages. The Apostle John told us this about the love of God. In his letter, he's 90 years old and he's writing. He says this, we have known and believed the love God has for us. God is love. He that dwells in love dwells in God and God dwells in him. Herein is the love of God made perfect that we may be able to stand before God on the day of judgment with boldness. Not because of us, right? Obviously because of him. Because as Jesus is, so are we in this world. I mean, just think of it. Isn't that amazing? And and, oh, I'm excited about this message. All right. And then the apostle Paul said this, my work is to preach the gospel, the complete message of God. This message is a secret truth that was hidden. The King James calls it a mystery. It was hidden since the beginning of time. It was hidden from everyone. It was hidden for ages. But now God has made it known to his holy people. He has revealed it for such a time as this. God has decided to let his people know just how rich and how glorious this mystery is. This secret truth is. What is it, Paul? Paul says the secret truth is this. Jesus Christ lives in you and he is the hope of your glory. It's Christ living in you who is the hope of your glory. That's amazing too. So what does this mean to you today? As I know that I'm going to leave, you know, Colossians 1 and I was like, Lord, what do you want me to say? Uh, uh, Actually, the first thing when I got up this morning and I was still in the bed praying, I was like, Lord, what do you want me to say? Um, The Lord started to speak to me about bringing the amazing back. This awe, this sense of amazement that I, that I once had, that you once had, I'm sure, when you first came to God, and how we have to maintain that. We have to maintain that awe. We have to maintain that amazement. We have to maintain this, this joy that we have because we are children of God. And so that's what we'll talk about today. I have five things to share with you on this Friday morning. Here we go. Number one, when you first come to God, Everything is amazing. I was 23 years old. I was stationed in Camp Doha, Kuwait. And, and as I kind of encountered God and everything was amazing to me, I was like, oh, my God, this is God. This is God. Right. I mean, there is a creator. We are the creation and we actually get to communicate with him. And then when you realize that he's actually living in you, that takes the amazement to a whole nother level. See, when you first start walking with God, uh, you're amazed by everything. At least I was. I was amazed that God would take the time to listen to me. I was amazed the first time he answered a prayer. Like I prayed and he answered it. And I was like, oh my, this is amazing. I mean, I prayed and God, I mean, God, like God, the God, right? The only one and true God. He answered my prayers. It's amazing when you get to sense his presence, right? So like maybe you were praying or you're in a church service or whatever, and the power of God, the manifest presence of God comes and you can sense that God is in the room. And it's just amazing. And everything is amazing at that point. Everything is new. Everything is awesome. Everything is amazing. However, over the process of time, we know how things get, you know, over the process of time, that awe can wear away, that that sense of amazement can wear away. And and so we can get comfortable with the things of God and so comfortable that we fail to really be awed by his presence. And so from time to time, God has to remind us just how amazing he is. God just has to remind us so that we can bring the awe back, so that we can bring the amazing back, so that we can fall on our knees and worship him like we used to worship, cry out to him like we used to cry out. It's amazing, and it's time to bring the amazing back. Number two, it's amazing to think that God made plans for you before the world began. Now, think about that for a minute. Before you ever took one breath, before you ever took one step, God had already planned out your life. God finished you 
before you ever got started, before your mother met your father, before you were a twinkle in your father's eye, God had already mapped out your life. It's like he planned out your whole life, right? From beginning to the end, he rewound the tape and he pressed play the day you were born. And now when he looks at you, he's looking for what he planned out. He's looking for what he saw. He's looking for history to repeat itself in your life. He's looking for his story to play out in your life. History, his story. He's looking for what he already planned and that. I don't know about you, but to me, that's amazing. It's amazing that God thought about me, Rick Pena, that God decided to make my name great, that God wants to elevate me and exalt me because I humble myself under under the mighty hand of God and God wants to use me to do all that stuff that he already mapped out that is not even about me it's all about him and what he already planned for me to do and now I'm living out I am living out what he already planned I don't know about you but to me that is amazing number three it's amazing that that's what Paul was talking about this this whole thing but think about number three this is what John was talking about it's amazing to think that God loves you with an everlasting love with an unconditional love nothing you did caused god to start loving you and nothing you do will ever cause him to stop god loves you look at me for a minute god loves you despite your faults and your flaws and your failures god loves you despite your constant wavering and occasional waywardness and every once in a while you get crazy and you go down a rabbit trail and you, you choose to live life on your own and you put your will above his will and you do all this stuff and, and God loves you anyway. Now, I'm not saying that there are no repercussions to your actions, right? I'm not saying that if you make bad decisions, you're still going to get good results. No, uh, watch this. So sin may not unravel your righteousness, but sin will unravel your life. If you make bad decisions, you're going to get bad results. If you sow bad seeds, you're going to get a bad harvest. But here's my point. Even while you're going through all of that, even if you are hard headed, even if you are making bad decisions, even if you are living beneath God's best through it all, God still loves you at no point. Will he ever turn his back on you? At no point will, will he say, I'm tired. I'm, I'm washing my hands with this boy. I'm washing my hands with this girl. At no point will he ever get tired of loving you. And that is amazing. Number four, it's amazing to think that God lives in you. This is what Colossians 1 is about. I mean, that, I don't know about you, but I mean, that's amazing. To me, I mean God. I mean like God, God. Like, like, like the, the true God, the everlasting God. The God who was and is and ever shall be. Right? The God of your yesterday, your today, and your tomorrow. The God of your already. The God of your right now and the God of your not yet. This God who sits on the circle of the earth. The God who sits high and looks low. This same God, the one true and everlasting God. From everlasting to everlasting, he is God. That God lives in you. That God lives inside of you. The God who is in all places at the same time. The God who knows all things. The God who has all power. That God. God, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, that God lives inside of you. That I don't, that's amazing. I mean, think about it right now on your calendar is a Friday morning. I'm sure you have a calendar. You got things to do. You might have to go run around and go to Walmart, get some grocery shopping. You might have a bunch of meetings. You might have some phone calls, but through it all, through all that stuff you have to do, that God is going to be with you because he's in you and he's going to be with you every step of the way that is amazing number five and finally it's amazing to think that God chose you he could have remained in heaven but he chose to live inside of you he chose you to be his representation in the earth. He chose you to be his proof. He chose you to be his prize. He chose you to be his child. Watch this. You are not a slave. You are not a servant. You are a son. You are a child of the most high God. He lives in you and you are one with him. And that, my friends, is amazing. So let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to repeat after me in faith from a believing heart. Say this. Say, Father. 
This is a year of great victory for me. I go back in order to go forward. I bring the amazing back. The amazement I once had when I first came to you is now coming back to me. It's amazing that you have chosen to live in me. It's amazing that you have chosen to show the world what you are like and to do it through me. I am your choice. I am your prize. I am your son. I am one with you and you are one with me. That's amazing. And this is why I boldly declare that as Jesus is, so am I in this world. I declare this by faith in Jesus name. Amen. This is today's word. Apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org. Leave a message. Uh, oh, sign up and get the messages. And before you go from this video, share this with your friends. Share this on your social media. Let's let everyone everywhere bring the amazing back. Justin Timberlake brought the, brought the sexy back. Well, let's bring the amazing back of us walking with God and God walking with us. God bless you.